Hi, welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Today we're going to be having- Oh, there's, there's spiders all over the table! Oh, no, it's okay. There's S-P-Y-D-E-R. They're color calibrators, so... We'll be talking about color calibration! So this, my friends, is the color calibration lineup from Data Color. They've been producing color management solutions since 1970, the most famous of which is their Spider line of color calibration devices. So here we have their complete Spider 4 lineup. Now, the first question is why calibrate? Obviously for photographers and video professionals, you want to make sure that all of your displays are showing true to life color so that everyone viewing your work can enjoy it as it was meant to be enjoyed. Even for amateur photographers, I mean, color correction can, can be very important so that you know how you, you know, the image that you're working on here is going to look when you print it out. So you can color calibrate both your displays and your printers in order to make sure that you have some consistency to the work you're doing. Now, LCD monitors in manufacturing can have a very large variance in color. Uh, this is particularly true for TN panels. Although IPS panels will be very, very different from, from individual to individual, even within the same model. So, for example, if you're working with a non-calibrated display, you might think that, you know, the editor might sit there and go, okay, you know, this super green grass looks really good, but then in actuality, when anyone else loads it up on their display, it's going to look like radio active. So um, something else to be noted is that even if you're buying super expensive monitors and they are factory calibrated and valid validated at the factory, uh, your color perception can be thrown off by the ambient light around you and colors can drift over time. So calibration is important. So this brings us to the spider lineup. These three right here are used for PCs, so the Elite Pro and Express. Actually, these top two are the same hardware physically, so the difference has more to do with the software implementation and the features available. The Express is actually significantly lower end hardware, but is still going to be a whole lot better than, than nothing. This one right here, the Spider 4 TV HD, is a little bit special and it's used for TVs. It has a DVD and Blu-ray based test pattern disc for calibration that allows you to, well, run it on your TV as opposed to on a computer. One other thing in their lineup that might be interesting for photographers who shoot in RAW is the Spider Cube. It provides a reference for white balance, exposure, black levels, and brightness. So you just dangle that into the shot. It's a durable resin cube with white, black, and 18% gray regions so that you can just shoot that reference shot and then apply whatever settings are appropriate to an entire series of photos. Very, very cool. Okay, so now back to the three main spider models for PC. I could run through all the features, but um, maybe it'd be easier if instead of boring you with the complete comparison chart, you guys can go ahead and check out the link in the video description. But I'll tell you the key feature differences that uh, change as you go up. So first First of all, there's more granular control with respect to gamma, color temperature, and color profiles. This has to do with the hardware just plain getting better when you move from the Express to the higher end models. The basic version has a single set of parameters with no real flexibility, but still great for beginners, especially if you don't really know the ins and outs of color calibration and you just want something that you can plug in and know that it's better than it came out of the factory. If you want more control, you'll have to step up to the Pro or the Elite and you'll get settings like multiple display calibration projector calibration, and the ability to compensate for ambient light, which can be important if you're working at different times of day. Because if you start working on something with, you know, the two o'clock afternoon sun coming through your window, and you finish it up in the middle of the night, you might actually be looking at a pretty different image. So having it nearby, collecting ambient light data and making adjustments on the fly, it's definitely a positive thing. You'll also get the ability to recalibrate more quickly instead of doing the process all over again with the more professional models. So let's do a quick demo here. Editor, pull up the footage. So here's Jack's setup. He doesn't really do any editing. We don't even know what he does all day, but that doesn't mean that he doesn't like to look at nicely calibrated photos and videos and like seriously, what does he do all day? Anyway, on the left is an uncalibrated display and on the right is a calibrated one. Now these are TN panels, nothing special and no amount of calibration is going to give them the ability to display all the colors that, that the human eye can see, but what little it can display is at least more accurate now. So now let's move on to IPS. This is Wheels' setup. And here we are able to actually see a more, um, a more significant impact. 
So again, on the left is an uncalibrated display as it appears from the factory, and on the right is calibrated. Now, what you might notice looking at both of these demos is that the calibrated one might not even actually look as good to you. The reason for this is that true to life accurate representations of colors are not a couple of things. So number one is they're not inherently uh, more pleasing to look at to the untrained eye. And number two, is that they're not really what we're used to. We're used to going into stores and looking at the televisions and monitors on display where things like contrast and saturation have been cranked up to make that one even more eye-bleedingly, you know, standing out than the one next to it so that you're more likely to buy it. So it takes a, a certain taste to appreciate proper color calibration on your displays. And I've actually been using a calibrated display for a little while. It's a PA279Q from ASUS. And I'm finding that now that I'm using it, it's, uh, it's actually quite, quite difficult and eye bleeding to look at anything else. So there you go, guys. For those of you who aren't professionals, it might be better to just not know what you're missing so that you can avoid spending money on you know, calibrators and expensive monitors. But for those of you who are professionals or who do want to do any kind of uh, photography or video work, especially with respect to color, hey, check out the Spider lineup. This has been another episode of NCIX Tech Tips, and I actually ad-libbed the last two minutes there. See, I haven't lost it. The script just friggin' cut off, and you wouldn't have even known it, I bet. So thank you for checking out this episode of NCIX Tech Tips, and as always, don't forget to subscribe.